Here's problem number one on the 214 sample test. We have a sinusoidal wave on a string is described by a wave function y equal 0.25 meters sine 2 pi x minus 10 t. Determine the amplitude, frequency, wavelength, and speed of propagation of the wave and transverse speed at x equal 1.6 meters, t equal 1.5 seconds. Well, here's our wave function. 0.25 sine 2 pi x minus 10 t. We can identify parts of this wave function. Here we have an amplitude. We have an angular wave number and an angular frequency. But the angular frequency is 2 pi times this 10. So our amplitude is 0.25 meters. Angular wave number is 2 pi per meter. And our angular frequency is 20 pi radians per second, or we could say per second. So we just identify this straight off of the wave function. Now, so, so we've answered A for the amplitude. Now we want frequency, wavelength, speed of propagation. Get the frequency, we can get that from the angular frequency, 20 pi. The frequency should be the angular frequency divided by 2 pi. So that's 20 pi divided by 2 pi, or 10 hertz. To get the wavelength, we can recognize that the angular wave number is 2 pi per meter. So the wavelength is 2 pi over the angular wave number, 2 pi over 2 pi, or 1 meter. To get the speed of propagation, that is the wavelength times the frequency. So that is going to be 1 meter times 10 hertz, or 10 meters per second. To get the transverse velocity at x equal 1.6 and t equal 1.5, we have to think about this wave function. It is really describing a point that is transverse to the direction of the wave itself. It's really a point in the medium perpendicular to the direction that the wave is moving. The wave is moving along the x-axis with some time t. So if we want to think about how the medium and how that point of the wave is moving transverse to the direction of the wave, then we need to take the derivative of this position y. So our transverse velocity is the derivative with respect to time of this position y. That's going to be the derivative of all this wave function, 0.25 sine all this stuff. So when we take the derivative, of course, of the constant, that's not going to, that's going to just come right out of the derivative. So we're taking the derivative of a function of sine. So this is going to be 0.25 times the derivative of the sine function. And then we're going to have the derivative with respect to time of what's inside. Because the sine function is a function of, of a function, and we have to take the derivative of what's inside by the chain rule. Let's make this a little bit clearer. If I write everything out here, then we're going to have 0.25 times the cosine of 2 pi x minus 20 pi t times the derivative of 2 pi x minus 20 pi t. That's going to be 0.25 cosine 2 pi x minus 20 pi t. Now since we're taking the derivative with respect to time, we can treat the x value almost like it were a constant. So the derivative of that with respect to time is going to give us a zero. And we're going to end up with the derivative of what's left, 
the negative 20 pi t, and that just gives us a negative 20 pi. So now 0.25 times the negative 20 pi will give us a negative 5 pi cosine 2 pi x minus 20 pi t. At the particular value where x is 1.6 and t is 1.5, 1.6 meters for x, 1.5 seconds for t, the value of this transverse velocity is a negative 5 pi cosine of 2 pi times 1.6 minus 20 pi times 1.5. So it's a negative 5 pi cosine, all this, of 3.2 pi minus 30 pi. Make sure your calculator is in radians mode when you do this. So I have 3.2 minus 30 times pi. I get a negative 84.2 radians. So it's a negative 5 pi cosine of a negative 80 4.2 radians. Make sure my calculator is in radians mode. Take the cosine of that. I get a negative 0 0.809. And when I multiply that by negative 5 pi, I get positive 12.7 meters per second. So that is the transverse velocity for this wave function.